I won't be long. I have a plane to catch. <laughs> uh, we've been in a series um, entitled God Is, and uh, we've looked at some of the attributes of God. And um, this week I want to talk um, something that comes from that. So I've tried to think of the title, and every time I think of the title, it kind of, I change it. So you can make your own title. Um, <laughs> I, I thought of, well, God is invisible, or everything starts in the invisible realm. Or the invisible shapes the visible. Or you reap what you sow. <laughs> Any number of uh, those, you can uh, tell me yours afterwards as to what you think would have been the most um, appropriate uh, from it. Um, I remember hearing of a, of a guy that said to another big strapping guy, and he said to him, he says, if I was to tell you that you're an idiot, what would you do? So the other guy says, I'd eat you. He says, what would you do if I just thought you were an idiot? So the guy says, well, I can't do anything about you thinking about it. So he said, okay, I'll think you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's uh, the best that they get. Um, we, we are ruled by our thoughts. Our thoughts, our brain, um, when, when we actually, whatever we're doing, even whether we think we're sleeping and doing nothing, our brain is active. Um, in fact, it uses about 30% of our, uh, our physical energy, does the brain, in, in uh, working. And so even when we're asleep, it is, it is active. It is not, not just um, something that's inactive or passive, um, so often, even when we sleep, our brain, our mind is dealing with things that maybe that when we're awake, we couldn't handle and we, don't, we couldn't face. And yet, through our sleep so often, it, it, it deals with things. And of course, uh, sleep does far more than that, but it, it kind of sends our body through a reboot system. So it really is important, but I don't want to talk about sleep. I don't want you all going to sleep on me, but, um, <clears throat> but, but it does. And so I, I believe that it's important for us to take control of our thoughts. Yeah. Um, it, it is in, important because our thoughts, although they are invisible, they shape who we are and they shape our world. Um, they shape who we become. They shape the people around us. They shape the culture in which we live. Uh, so, for example, this morning, when you arrived at church, I wonder what your welcome was like. Maybe you didn't get welcomed. I don't know. Um, but how you were welcomed, when you came in here, you would have sensed an atmosphere. How you sense that atmosphere could be based on any number of things. Uh, if somebody smiled at you, if somebody said hello to you, if somebody welcomed you, you may feel welcomed and at home. You may be here and feeling awkward and feeling out of place and feeling, I don't fit here. There's, 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 a, there's an atmosphere in this place because of the people in the room. Yeah. And the way that we think affects the atmosphere in the room. It affects uh, the way that you respond to what is in. So, for example, the way that you think your invisible thoughts this morning are interpreting the things that I say, the, thing, the songs that we've sung. When we come to people, it interprets it, and we all interpret it through the lens uh, of our mind. And often, there's many things that have influenced our mind that, uh, that, 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 that affect the way that we perceive things and we understand things. So, for example, if I was to come off this stage this morning and come towards you, 
I wonder how you would respond to that because some people would respond and think, yes, he said hello to me and, and, um, and he picked me out of the crowd. Other people would die a thousand deaths to think, no. So what I'm saying is you could have any number of responses to one action. And if I'm coming to talk to you, I don't know about you, I'm sure you do exactly the same, but when I'm coming to talk to someone or somebody's coming to talk to me, I'm trying to read some of the visible clues to what's going on in the invisible realm. I'm trying to read your body language. I'm trying, are you smiling? Are you looking bright? Or are you looking like you're going to give me a telling off? Or whatever it might be. If I've seen you before, I might (laughs) already uh, have certain things in mind. And you might have the same. So what happens in our thinking affects our lives dramatically. It affects our lives dramatically in every way. And so I believe that we need to allow the Spirit of God to work in our thought life in that invisible realm that no one else can see because uh, the Bible talks about that the, the Spirit of God, the Spirit in a man, no one else knows what you're thinking except you. And obviously God knows what you're thinking, but no one else because we can put on a front. And, uh, and the Bible says that. So, uh, I mean, in 2 Corinthians, he talks about that. He says, because no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. And yet, Paul goes on to say, but we have the Spirit of Christ. In other words, we can know the thoughts of God when the Spirit of God reveals those things to us. So we can have an inside that comes from the invisible realm. We can have something beyond what anybody else can have when we know Christ. Because the Spirit comes to live within us. And so it's important how we think. If you think on the things of the flesh, or whether you think on the things of the Spirit, it makes a massive difference to your life. The Bible is absolutely full of stressing the importance of the things that we think about. The things that are coming from the invisible realm, because what we think about eventually becomes an action. If we think about it, and and how we think about it, eventually it will become an action, and and we will work on it. Romans 8 says this, verses 5 to 7, those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting the sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. This is why our thought life is so important. And that's why when we come to God, we have to come by faith. We have to believe that he exists. We have to believe that he loves us. We, it, all, it all starts in the invisible realm. Yeah. Faith is something that is intangible. It's unseen. Yeah. And yet often we can see the effects of what's going on in the inside of us. So, for example, Roger Bannister, who was the first man to break the four-minute uh, mile... He broke it because he believed that it could be done when everybody else said it could not be done. It was beyond the physical capabilities of what a human being could do, and yet he did it. Because it happened, first of all, in the invisible realm. And that's what they teach athletes now. They teach them to actually to think through things before they do them. Yeah. And uh, I've seen many of the different... Um, 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 movies that are, that, are, that have been based on, documentaries that have been based on this, on how just going through the motion in your mind can make you effective. Because the mind is the importance, is so important. And, uh, and, and, and it's the mind that controls our physical. So for example, if you hear some romantic music, it changes the way you feel. Your brain is reinterpreting that, your mind is standing, and it's, it's affecting your body. 
If you were to, uh, to listen to, um, uh, to, say, a marching sound or, or guns going off or anything like that, that would give a different effect. And so your emotions are affected by the invisible realm of your thought life. We respond to it. I've seen um, where they've done uh, movie clips and they've done different music to it and how the same clip with different music affects how you respond to it. So it's coming in that, in that way that we are in some ways programmed to respond to certain things in certain ways. And I'm saying to us, we need to be reprogrammed through the Spirit of God so that what God has to say about us is what matters. So that we, we change our perspective, we learn how to live, we learn what is important, what should be our value, what should be our actions from the things of God. In other words, the invisible word of God, who is the creator of all things, he created things just by his word. He spoke and he came into being. That's all he had to do. He speaks something because God is an invisible God, so he operates in the invisible realm. And so where you and I cannot see and cannot understand often them things, God is comfortable in that. That's where he operates from, so that that which is visible was made from that which is invisible. In other words, everything in the visible realm comes because of the invisible realm. So if you and I are having things in the visible realm that we don't like to see, we have to change uh, the, the things that are going on in the invisible realm. <laughs> we have got to learn to start to sow into the spiritual realm. Start to sow into in the so words. So, in other words, when when we speak, we are, as it were, we're conveying our thoughts out. They're becoming something audible, but there's a faith step in that, and it's actually it's like we are spraying out what's in our heart. Yeah. So, for example, like if I had some perfume up here and I was to spray the perfume. Uh, my understanding is that with the expensive uh, perfume, you don't just spray it on like I do in the morning, a bit here and a bit there, a bit everywhere. But, uh, but, but what you do is you spray it and you walk into that spray. I want to say to you, for many of us, we're walking around having been in the spray of someone else's negative thoughts a negative words spoken over our life. We may be our own thinking. We are speaking negative things. And uh, that invisible thoughts are, are like spread out. I want to say to you, we can think differently. We can be different. We can actually start to spray out things that are affected in the invisible realm so that we're spraying out the Spirit of God. Amen. We're spraying out over people's lives and the atmosphere that we have because the atmosphere in here, the atmosphere in your life, the atmosphere in your family is set by the invisible realm. It's set by the way that we think. If we think right, we will act right. If we think wrong, we're not going to do it. In other words, a, a tree is known by its but actually, if it didn't bear fruit, you didn't see the fruit, it could be a very healthy tree, but we only see that by the fruit. Yeah. So in other words, a healthy tree is not made healthy by the fruit, but the fruit is an, is an outward expression of what's going on in the inside. And for many of us, we are too busy looking at the fruit, looking at the externals, looking at the results, looking at what has happened to our life. We're looking at the bad stuff or the good stuff. We're looking at the harvest. We're looking at things that are in our life that matter than blessings or the hurts or the hang-ups. And we're, we're, what we realize is we're living in that, thinking that's what we should live in. When God is saying to us that we can change the seed in the invisible realm and we can change what we're harvesting we can change the harvest but it starts at the seed level it starts at the invisible level so we've got to think about the seed yeah. Matthew 13 talks about the seed and, and coming on to different different soil of people's hearts and how we think and one of them is the birds of the air the birds of the air is a it's satanic birds. Now they're invisible seed and it's invisible birds. Yes? 
And that they come invisibly and take away the seed of the word of God which has been planted in our lives invisibly. It's there, nobody can see it, nobody understands the germinating, nobody can see the soil of our heart. But Satan knows that he has to get the seed. Because if he can get you at the seed level, he doesn't need to worry about the harvest. Because the harvest is a result of whatever seed is in your life. So my question to you is, is what are you seeding into your life? What are you seeding into your life? Everything God gives to us has seed to, re, to reinvest in again. So in other words, when, uh, an easy one obviously is, is, is finances. So for example, like if you, when God blesses you with finances, he gives you seed to sow. A farmer knows that he doesn't eat, eat the sowing seed. And the sowing seed is the best seed. He saves the best seed because he knows that's the seed that will give him a bountiful harvest the following year. And so too often though, what we are doing, we are eating the seed that is meant for us to actually to sow. And then we're wondering why there's barrenness, why we're wondering why there's nothing but weeds growing up. It's because we're not sowing into the invisible realm, the, the, the word of God. He needs to be planted. He needs to be uh, um, brought into our life so that we can change our life and change our family and change our nation. Our nation can be changed but it comes from the invisible realm. It doesn't come from any physical things. The physical is a result of what's happening on the invisible side. And you and I need to understand that in our life, that if we can change our thinking, we can change our life. You see, if you are expecting something, if you are believing for something, you actually plan for it. Like a woman that's pregnant, if she believes she's pregnant, yes, then what does she do? She prepares. She gets ready. Gets the husband. Now come on. You need to do this. You need to get there. You know, do you know what I mean? We get, our, we get our orders. Why? Because there's expectancy. Something is going to happen. We believe it's going to happen. And because we believe it to happen, we change the way we act, the things that we do, the places that we go. And so God is looking for you and me, that we have got to, when God, we receive some, we've got to be, be looking to be like farmers. You see, farmers have to be good at either one of two things. They either have to be good at sowing seed in the spring or begging at autumn. They have to be one and good at one another because if they don't sow in the spring, they're not going to reap later on, are they? They're not going to reap a harvest. There, there is a principle in God that whatever it is in every area of your life, there is a sowing and reaping principle. So if you don't sow, if you sow love, what are you going to receive? Now, unfortunately, for too many Christians, they're like the, the farmer that has a year of bad crops. There's kind of, there's either disease or something's gone, gone terribly wrong. And so they kind of have this attitude that, well, okay, I'm not going to sow again. Yeah. I tithed. And look, things, my, my, my finances went patient. It's like we, but there's a principle there. The farmer doesn't think, okay, because of this one-off aspect that I'm not going to sow again. The next year, he knows he has to sow. He might have had something that, that, that came in. Satan comes in and tries to destroy things. He might try to come in, and he does, because he's trying to get to the seed. Yeah. Yeah. My question is, what are you sowing? Yeah. What are you sowing into your mind? What are you sowing into the people around you? What are you sowing into the church? What are you sowing into your community? What are you sowing? Because what you sow, you will... Reap. Amen, absolutely. I want to say to you, divorce starts in the invisible realm. It starts with a thought. Murder starts with a thought. And I'm sure many of you have heard it, if not all of you, which says this, watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. 
Watch your actions and they will become habits. Watch your habits because they will become your character. And your character will determine your destiny. In other words, you and I are on one of two paths, depending on how we think in the invisible realm. We are standing at one of two doors. We are building on one or two, one of two foundations in our life. So we've got to understand that actually there's choice into what we sow into. If you're sowing in, into your life, you're sowing in just TV and soap operas and all that kind of thing, what are you going to reap? But if you're sowing into your life the word of God and fellowship with God's people and serving, I want to say to you, your service in this house, if you belong to this house, if your service in this house depends on the invisible realm, it depends on how you think. Because if you think one way, you're going to just do as little as possible. It's like, the thing is, is you want to do the little as possible. That's a sign of Im immaturity. Yeah. I couldn't say it then. Try it again. <laughs> immaturity. So in other words, if you have to be asked, if you have to be cajoled, if you have to be, come on, go on you've got to do this, can you help, can you do that? Then you, that's a sign of immaturity. But actually, if you're there and you're involved in it, that's the difference. In other words, to use it as an example, is children. Our children are immature. So in other words, we have to keep being on their back. Clean your teeth. Make your bed. Go to bed. D you know, whatever it is, we're constantly on them, aren't we? Yeah, we've got to be on them. Because if you don't on them, they're not going to do it. They're just going to take the easy route, yes? Where the parents, there's maturity, there's responsibility. And as we know, and I've taught many times, mum knows best. Yes? Because the kids... If you put out some food, if we lined up there with food, what, and it was a buffet, they would just go and they would probably start with the sweet stuff and the, and the buns and the biscuits and the jelly and ice cream and all that stuff. But mum knows best. She knows that actually, okay, not saying you can't have any of that, but actually let's start with the good stuff. Let's start with the meat and veg. Let's start with the stuff that will, because let's fill you up with the stuff that really happened because then you can have a bit of sweet stuff. Does that make sense? So, so we've got to think about our thinking. Yeah. Because we need to think for a change. Yes. We need to think about what we're thinking about. Because if we do, it can change our life. Yeah. Yeah. And so we've got to have that all, all ability in us. But it's so important because so often we get taken in by what's said around us. And other people, rather than actually looking for ourselves. But I want to say to you, if you will get into the Word of God, excuse me, and allow the Word of God to seep into your mind, yeah. it will change your values, it will change your perspective, it will change where you want to go, it will change what you want to do, it will change your thinking in every aspect of your life. Because God's Word is invisible. Because God speaks in the invisible into your invisible mind. And that invisible mind then thinks them thoughts that then can turn them into words. Those words turn into actions. Those actions turn into habits. Those habits turn into your character. And your character determines your destiny. So in other words, we have got to realize that actually if we do the work at the seed level, we don't need to worry about the harvest. The problem is we are always focused on the fruit. It's like Jesus, when he came to the fig tree and he was passing it by, he went to the fig tree for apples. He went for figs, didn't he? He expected a fig tree to bear figs. But when he's passing and he's not, he cursed because it was not fulfilling its divine mandate which his divine mandate was to be fruitful, yeah. to bear figs. Yeah. And so Jesus spoke to it and nothing happened. But the next day when they came past, they noticed that the fig tree had withered. 
In other words, Jesus had spoken to the internal part of the tree. He'd spoken to the invisible aspect. He'd gone to the root of the issue. He hadn't just gone to the fruit or, or the outward leaves or that kind of thing. He realized you have to go to the source of the problem. And that so often we are firefighting. We're dealing with symptoms rather than dealing with the root of an issue. And the root of the issue always starts in the invisible realm. And it's the invisible realm where you've got to change. If you change the invisible realm, if you change your thinking, if you change what's happening in the spiritual domain of where God lives and God operates, I want to say to you that the, the, the harvest, you don't need to worry because at due time, you will have a harvest. That's what he, Paul says. He, says. he says, keep going on. He keeps saying, don't worry about, about doing good. Keep doing good. Because in due season, you will reap. But we get caught up because we haven't seen the harvest. Yes, yes. But the problem is, is we're focusing on the wrong thing. Yes. God says, just keep sowing. Just keep sowing. Keep watering that seed. Yes. Keep allowing. Because when that seed grows and giving it time and giving it, in God's appointed time, it will come to pass. There are things that God has spoken over us as a church and over me and I hope over you. If you've been listening to him, he will want to speak over your life and he wants to speak some prophetic things into your life. They're invisible things. And this is, this is so profound because if you will allow the invisible prophetic into your life to, 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 to speak and to nurture it and to allow it to think and to, and to ponder it and to, and to nurture it, I want to say to you that invisible word when it, it takes root in your, your life, as it were, in the invisible realm in your life, it will produce in its season. Yes. Yeah. And just because we haven't seen it, that God's not yet yeah. is not God's no. And we've got to realize that God has a principle of sowing and reaping. If you want some love in your life, you've got to sow some love. If you want some, uh, you want a, uh, some financing life, you've got to be generous. If you, whatever area it is of your life, do you, do you know what I'm trying to say? You've got to do that. If you want people to help you, you've got to help people. Yeah. If you want people to come to church, you've got to come to church. You've got to invite them to church. You've got to, you've got to be proactive. So I want you to realize that this week, as you go away from here, that you and I operate in two realms. Yeah. We are on one realm, seated with Christ. We are in heavenly places. We are, can hear what God is saying. We can know what God is wanting to do. And yet we are earthbound. We are here in the natural. Yeah. And we can hear what people are saying around us. And we know what's happening. So we've got the two. And we, we, God has called us to, as it were, to bring the one to the other. He wants us to bring the invisible realm of what God is saying and what God wants to do into this world. So when you are going about your business this week... I want you to be aware and thinking about the invisible nature. What is happening in the invisible side of the person you're talking to, the people you live with, the people that you work with? What is happening on the invisible side? There's always something that God has planned. Now, I can ignore, you can ignore the heavenly voice. But if we do, we're not going to have the opportunity to sow it. Yeah. And I believe that that's the call upon every one of us is to be fruity. Yeah. We need to be fruity. We need to be fruitful. God wants us to be productive. He wants us to be successful. He wants us that there's something out. But I want to say to you, rather than focus on the fruit, focus on the invisible. Yeah. Yeah. Focus on the root. Because to be fruitful, we have to be connected to the vine. And it's the vine through which it flows. And it flows to us and allows us to change so that the blood and the blood are flowing through the vine. Because that's what the feed vines, they feed them blood. How disgusting is that? But they feed it blood. I mean, many times they'll kill something just to... Uh, I, I only know because um, mother-in-law used to have a vine. 
and uh, used to be absolutely everywhere with uh, things and uh, used to get by this blood and put it in. Oh, anyway. But, but you can see what's in the natural. There's a spiritual dimension to it, isn't there? There is the blood of Christ that flows through us. And so the forgiveness of Christ. This week, you and I can bring heaven to earth. You and I can bring the God's forgiveness. We can change a life this week. And all it takes is it to operate in the invisible realm and to say something. So that it, because you can't see a word. You know, I say, well, I can hear. Yeah, you can hear it, but what I'm saying, it started in the visible. If you will be bold and operate and realize that in everybody's life they have thoughts. Yeah. I know it might sound like because some people you think, do they have any thoughts? <laughs> but everybody's thinking, and they're thinking about themselves generally. They're thinking about their life. They're thinking about their world. And wouldn't it be nice for us to come into their world and to be able to just to share the light and the love of Christ? Yeah. And that's the privilege that you and I have because we have been brought into the light to be the light. We have been brought in to hear the inaudible, to be able to speak it out. We have been been shown the impossible so that we can produce the impossible. The impossible is possible with God. And you and I, it doesn't matter, we think, oh, it's too hard to eat. It is nothing is too hard for our God. And I believe God is in the business of turnaround. And the exciting thing we sung this, sung this morning was, and I nearly changed my sermon for it, was, he knows your name. Yeah. He knows your name. And everybody you meet this week, he knows their name. Yeah. And if all they were will change the invisible realm in their life, if they will change their thought life and go from unbelief to belief, they will step from one kingdom into another yeah. kingdom. And you and I have the privilege that for all eternity people can be in heaven because you and I stepped out of our comfort zone and said yes to God. We will take the invisible and make it visible. If you and I will do that this week, I tell you there is nothing that can stop us. Will you do that? Will you think differently this week? In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, 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 oh,